what's going on y'all welcome back to the channel welcome back we are here once again season 8 episode 5 of the walking dead is here today and we're just gonna jump right in we all know what's going on morgan is losing it but guess what we got the guns courtesy of daryl and rick of course some things went down in the last episode man that really you know what i mean almost you know losing king ezekiel I mean, so many things went wrong. We lost some people, you know, from, you know, King Ezekiel's crew. But, um, you know, we got Gregory back at freaking Hilltop, you know, with his bum ass. Um, we got Jesus and, you know, everybody coming back with the prisoners and stuff. Uh, man, it's a dilemma. It's a dilemma. Let's just say that. It's a dilemma. Tara wants to kill. Everybody's on edge right now. You know, and they're leaving things up to the three, the three leaders. How will this impact King Ezekiel? I think it's going to have a huge toll on him that he lost so many people. That he, you know, he made all these speeches, man. And that's what I'm saying. He's a very optimistic guy, but he overpromises too much. And that's one of the things that's devastating now because he overpromised because he believed that everybody was going to come back and practically nobody came back <laughs> so you know what i mean it was just him jerry and carol that came back everybody else is dead man and it's just it's crazy even shiva you know we lost shiva and it, it was devastating man but at the end of the day i think the goals that they wanted to accomplish were accomplished so let's see if how negan will come back from all these loss he lost like three compounds or four maybe um i don't he hasn't lost sanctuary they did a lot of damage over there but they haven't lost it um well the dead is all over the place so i don't know but in any case we're going to watch this episode, and I will see you guys for the review. Alright, so there you go, guys. Season 8, Episode 5 of The Walking Dead. Woo! 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 <laughs> Anyways, guys, um... It's late. It's like 12 a.m. right now I'm recording this. So if it seems like I'm whispering, I am. <laughs> I'm trying not to talk too loud, even though the room is soundproof. I don't want to get too excited. But I'm really enjoying this season, man. Episode 5 was pretty, um, you know, showing us what's happening on Negan's side. And I appreciate that. So we're going to concentrate on that. We get no updates on King Ezekiel. I mean, except for the... Um, I'll talk about the whole thing that's going on with Rick right now. Um, with whoever is looking at him. I don't know if those, those are saviors. Why is there a fucking helicopter? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't know. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to just be like, okay, I guess this is what we're, we're going to have to deal with now. You know, um, so I really do um, appreciate you guys for all the love you've been showing. So let me say that off bat. So for the situation that's going on in Negan, Negan trying to find out who's the rat. They're out of the little whatever trailer or whatever they were in. Um, him and Gabriel, he confessed to some things that I never expected of him. You know, are expected of his past life. But a lot of people have changed because of the situation, right? He's doing things in his own way. Doesn't excuse the fact that he's a freaking psychopath. But hey, a, a story is a story, right? Um, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it kind of like a contrast between him and Morgan going through kind of like the same thing, right? And who Morgan is versus who he is it like morgan is transforming into who negan is right now but negan is already there so that contrast is pretty dope in my opinion so you have um negan doing the guts thing getting through the crowd 
you know, and proving to his people that he's still alive. They were arguing, the guys in the meeting, they, you know, it just shows you how much control Negan actually has. So, you know, as soon as they think he's dead, everybody start revolting. Um, I don't know who this girl is or whatever her name is. I can't even remember. Regina, I think it is. She just, all of a sudden, this is the first time we've ever seen her. I, if if she's appeared before, please let me know because I've never seen her before. And she's supposed to be one of the leaders of one of the outposts, it seems. So they know there's a rat. Um, Eugene know who the rat is. We all know that it's the white, but is Eugene going to give up the white? I don't think he's going to. Damn refrigerator just came in like, <laughs> yeah, you know <what> saying <laughs> strange things happen in this, this room sometimes. Anyways, um, so that's pretty dope, man. Um, the story that you're trying to tell, I'm down to see what they're going to do next so far still so good still don't see what the problem is with season eight a lot of people might have a problem with this episode because they chose to show a flashback of the meeting that happened before rick them came to the sanctuary and all that other stuff but i appreciated that episode because we needed to know you know what i'm saying what was being discussed you know what i'm saying what meeting are you talking about like you know did they have to do that? No, they didn't have to do it, but it's good that they did. You get what I'm saying? Like, I appreciated that. Maybe, you know, you guys didn't, but I did appreciate the fact that they gave us that little tidbit at the, the beginning of the episode. The interaction between Negan and Gabriel was pretty good, too. Two really good actors in a space together having that much time to, to involve to do a dialogue together that is they knocked it out of the park no doubt about it especially gabriel we are used to negan antics but when he actually lets his guard down of not being negan he can actually be a, a character you want to listen to you get what i'm saying you actually kind of feel sorry for him in some ways when he actually lets that wall down that front that he puts up to you know um lead people <laughs> you know i mean it's just so weird the things that he says because that's actually what he believes he actually believes that he's saving people he really believes that to his core and to be a believe believable villain you have to have those things about you because you believe in these this utopian future sometimes of your own making and you don't even realize what you're actually taking away from the people that you're actually you get what i'm saying like he thinks he's saving the people when he's actually enslaving them he thinks he's he, he thinks that the girls they had a choice when he's actually forcing them to be his wife you know what i'm saying because it's either you be my wife or death who's gonna choose death over that when you are the one giving them the choice of death or be my wife right yes they did have a choice truth that is the truth but other than being your wife is choosing death right so hey <laughs> you know what i mean um so i mean they would have died with their significant other you know what I mean? If they didn't choose to be his wife. So in his, in, in his head, he's doing right by them. But we all know that's how psychopaths are. You know what I'm saying? That's just how they think. They think what they're actually doing when in our eyes, our sen sensible people's eyes, we see that as madness. You're crazy. And he sees that, oh, I'm doing it right. This is the right way. This is how it's supposed to be done. You know what I'm saying? And we're looking at it like you're 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 crazy. Okay? You're crazy. <laughs> but in any case, you know, I appreciate um those interactions anyways. The fight between Rick and Daryl, I knew nothing was gonna come of that. Um, but we did lose the gun in the process, so all in all, nobody was a winner. <laughs> out of that fight so they're best friends so they're going to fight they're gonna have disagreements you know 
Um, I think Daryl is on a warpath. Him and Tara is kind of in the same position where they feel like they've lost so much because of these guys. They don't give a shit about anybody else. They just want to just get this shit over with, kill everybody, because all these people signed up to be Negan. So, you know, um, but you got to understand that there's other people there that didn't really, they did it because they wanted the pr protection. They didn't do it because... You know they want to be badass and they want to take over they didn't jo join the 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 infantry of the negan crew you know what i'm saying of the saviors they were just there they just wanted the protection they wanted to eat the shelter and all of this other stuff so they just decided to be with negan so to kill those people would be in my opinion killing innocent people because they're just you know what i'm saying they're you know, sometimes people will do anything for food and for shelter, especially in an apocalyptic situation. You get what I'm saying? I mean, I was homeless for a little bit and I would have done anything for food. Well, I don't think I would have done anything, anything, because some people's going to look at me like, would you suck a dick? No, I would not suck a dick for food. I'd rather starve to death, to be honest. You know what I mean? So um, for me, it was just like, I'm talking about like, if I had to like, do something f for free, you know what I'm saying? Like, mow your lawn or, <laughs> or some, something like that, you know what I mean? Or, what do I have to do? I'm, I, they're, I guess it's not the same. I, I shouldn't compare to that because this will, to myself, to be honest, because there's a lot of things I wouldn't do just for food. You get what I'm saying? Even if I'm starving, I think well you never know i mean to be honest do you really know what you would possibly do i mean i went a lot of days without eating man and i never turned to do anything stupid like i shoplifted to eat yeah i did and i got caught you know i think that is something that i talked about in the video that i did too so so yeah yeah i would rather do that <laughs> <laughs> I guess. But anyways, um those days are gone, but I do understand I do understand where Daryl is coming from, but at the same time, I think Rick was right on make on trying to stop him from going to do something. And I get he came up with an alternate solution, but at the same time, you know, you could still get somebody hurt. You know what I'm saying? Just like what Rick is saying is exactly what happened too. They went upstairs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so everybody was in that building, to be honest, you know, um, so it is what it is. It is what it is. But in any case, um, there are things in the show that, you know, people are not going to like. There are things that people are going to love. And right now I have no qualms with season eight, five episodes in. So, um, I know I'm going to talk about this for the rest of the season because me going in, I mean, pretty much everybody was saying, I think it's like only one or two people that said that season eight was a good season. Majority of people were saying season eight is bad and did some of them have skipped it and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk about it, about my opinion during the season of what I'm seeing so far. Maybe I can, maybe I can put it, put it to them in a different perspective for them to understand why i enjoyed it or why i think it was a decent season so maybe i can do that so thank you guys so much for tuning in as always man this episode was pretty cool thank you guys so much for keeping supporting these videos man i really do appreciate y'all leave a like leave a comment and also subscribe if you're new it's your boy terabyte reacts and i'm done for the night man peace